According to a Swiss psychologist named Marie-Louis von Franz, there was a disturbing trend in the 20th century where many women have had stunted growth in the maturation stage. They seem to occupy adult bodies. However, their mental component development does not seem to develop simultaneously, meaning that it is stunted even in their maturation. In 1959, Franz was the one that discovered this behavior, and he subsequently gave lectures on the puer eternus, otherwise known as the eternal child. Therefore, Carl Jung had identified the name to refer to an individual like Peter Pan, who fails to grow up. Thus, in the lectures that Franz did, he describes the eternal child as a person who stays for so long on adolescence's psychology. It is usually a replication of the typical 17th or 18th year old life later in life. Most probably, the boy is living with or has a significant dependence on the mother. The most astonishing aspect of this issue is that Franz had predicted this issue where the puer eternus would spread to the future and most probably affect many boy children worldwide. On the upper hand, the Western world would be positively affected by this ordeal. Many young men are suffering or struggling sexually, spiritually, financially, socially, and academically. They often live in their parents' homes at the age of 20 to 30 years. Also, they choose to conform to their parents' comfort zones without testing the earth's waters or testing a sense of independence, which is crucial in every child's mentality in this modern world. Many choose the path of pornography, the internet, and video games. In most cases, they enjoy the moment of pleasure to ease the pain they are feeling. Hence, it is quite correct to establish that Puer Eternus is a primary modern age neurosis. In today's modern society, both men and women have been positioned to deal with different paternal obligations. Mothers have been regarded to have more interactions with the children than their male partners. They tend to maintain more physical contact. They are more nurturing, more caring, comforting as well. Also, the empathy is usually part of their lives because they tend to be more empathetic to both emotional and physical needs that every child requires. The bond between a mother and the baby is usually a landmark bond that is otherwise a psychological bond usually known to psychologists as the mother complex. James Hollis believes that a child's experience with the mother parent is usually emotionally charged and complex. On the other hand, it is beyond one's control. Traditionally, the father's role is to provide the child with resources, guidance, and protection. Thus, the father does not enjoy the aspect of dependency with the child as much as the mother does. The father should help the child break out of the dependency bond with the mother to emerge as a functional and independent adult. Individuals have transitioned to adulthood from adolescence as a rite of passage. The fundamental mission was to separate the boy child from the mother, both physically as well as psychologically. Of course, the tradition was done by the elder of the male tribe, and it was done on the onset of puberty, and women are not allowed in these kinds of rituals. Mirka Elade's book of Symbols and Rites of Initiation indicates the rite of passage was done in the middle of the night. The cultural elders would be dressed as demons or gods, and thus the youth would be snatched from one's bed. Later the child would be taken deep in the cave and then buried alive as a symbol of darkness. It was known as the end of the symbolic death of childhood youth. Therefore, this stage represented the loss of the joys of responsibility and loss of paradise as well. Still, it was a means of conveying the message or rite of passage to the youth like the way Thomas is quoted saying, you can't go home again. Therefore, after the famous or the symbolic death of the childhood stage remarks, a general rebirth process is done to transform youth into a more mature stage in the future. The elders would then teach the child about the critical knowledge of the tribe by the elders. The youth would subsequently be sent to the desert to survive alone while struggling for survival. If the child would successfully return, then his tribe would receive him as an adult. Subsequently, the youth would be regarded as free from the mother complex dependency as well as immaturity which were no longer acceptable in the society of the neighborhood. Due to the intensity and violent nature of the initiation process, it means that the operation of the rite of passage of a boy needed some more deliberate measures for a knit to be successful. However, in today's world, especially the West, 
such kinds of traditions no longer exist. Therefore, due to the lack of elder's initiation in today's modern society, the youth have to depend on the father to provide them with guidance about the process of initiation to adulthood. On the other hand, not all fathers have the capacity to supply advice to their young boys. The father should be emotionally and physically present to be present in the child's public life. Also, the father should be ready to be responsible for showing that he is healthy and independent. He does something worth struggling or seeking to successfully encourage him to walk out of the comfort zones of childhood. James Hollis quotes, Sons also need to watch their father in the world. They need him to show them how to be in the world, how to work, how to bounce back from adversity. Conclusion Studies done by research analysts have indicated that only the 17th percent of American men have a positive relationship with their fathers. In most cases, fathers are both usually emotionally or physically unpresent. According to James Hollis, something tragic and large must have created the crucial balances of nature. Therefore, a child that was brought up in this manner usually lacks the discipline and the opportunity to stand up for himself, make decisions for himself, fail and fix himself before he develops into an adult who has a crippled mind which cannot endure or overcome inevitable struggles as well as challenges in his life. Thus, the boy child's need or desire to adapt to individual reality entails going through conflict, pain, and fear, thus forcing the boy to be bonded to the prospective mother. Therefore, as he grows up, he might tend to find a substitute for his mother later in life, especially in other women. Otherwise, the youth might find himself indulged in addiction as a source of comfort from distress. The child tends to emerge into the stage of adulthood with a powerful mother's complex. He might not seek to be independent, thus his consciousness might be possessed by a particular spirit of regression. If you found the video informative then hit the like button, comment your thoughts down and share to spread the word. Also a sub to the channel would be motivating. Just wait, we also have over 200 videos to watch, just click left or right. Keep inspiring.